<laughs> no, 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 I can do this. Okay. What's up, broods and broodettes? It's the Pico Dudes. Why are you always yelling? I'm always yelling. Aren't you excited today? I'm super excited. Tell you what, I'm Sam Rather. I'm here with uh, the man whose only claim to fame is Spike as a nickname. It's Whoa. Jeremy Adalgo. I'm impressed with that introduction. <laughs> oh, Thanks. shots fired. Thanks, man. Yeah, you... only claim to fame. All, All right. right. Well, we're going to have another one today, I think, because we're about to do another uh, wonderful tasting of what are we tasting today? Let me see if I can get this right. It's mm -hmm. Denny Khan's Imperial Vanilla Bourbon Porter. Damn, you pulled that off. First try. For once. For once. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. We're trying this um, delicious Imperial Porter, and we can say delicious because we did sneak a quick taste. That consisted of multiple glasses <laughs> <laughs> before starting. Um, and we're not going to spoil it, but uh, stick around because it's worth it. But before we get into it, why don't we talk about... Should we talk about Denny Kahn? Because this man is a legend in the home brewing community. Him and Drew Beecham, uh, who is a friend, co-worker, et cetera, of his. But you know, talk about uh, talk about Denny first. So Denny Kahn is a author, podcaster, and Pico Pack inventor. Actually, he just invented the recipe. Um, he's uh, apparently point. known for his hair and ukulele as well, and a rye IPA. So he started brewing in 1998 when his wife bought him a kit for brewing beer uh, for his birthday. And he was he was hooked ever since it actually worked. Stop eating popcorn in your microphone. It is so good. I know. God, you can't podcast with popcorn. <laughs> no. Do you have any chips? Can there, we get some? <laughs> hey, Adam. Hey, who do we have with us today? <laughs> so my brother-in-law, Adam Klein, is sitting in here. The beer wench. The beer, the beer wow. wench. Wow. He's uh huh. He's, That's what his thong says. <laughs> it's, it's the kind like like. Uh, Borat has <laughs> just a <laughs> giant <laughs> banana ham, yeah, giant man. Thong. It just says beer wench, but it's vertical. Mm -hmm. Beer wench up over both nipple. Yep. Wow. This this sunk quickly. Uh, hi, Adam. Um, yes, I will try and cut back on the popcorn. Sorry. So good. <laughs> Tell us more about what you're reading. Uh, I lost my place, but essentially, some of Denny Khan's uh, <laughs> bullet points. No things things that his that that are part of his philosophy are you know, you know making the best beer possible while having the most fun possible by doing the least work possible. Oh, I can get with that last part. Yeah, well, especially as a pico brewer, right? I mean, you get to cut down on the amount mm -hmm. of time and effort you put into it a little bit, and you still get some great tasting beers. And sometimes an ORB red. But hey, <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> this is perfect. Hey, is Father's Day coming up? Get your man a Pico Brew. Stay tuned to the end of the podcast to get your discount codes. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nice plug. Yeah, hey. So, uh, now, Denny, I've got a, a book. He and Drew Beecham, uh, both of them from Oregon, and they've been working together for a long time. Mm -hmm. Wrote, um, oh, gosh, they had the Experimental Brewing Podcast. Correct. And, and, gosh, the book is, it's titled, It's Not Experimental Brewing, It's Dang Close. And it's really an awesome Awesome book. They have multiple books, actually. They have Homebrew All-Stars. Oh, wow. They came out in May 2016. And they've got Experimental Homebrewing. Experimental Homebrewing, that's it. Mad Science and the Pursuit of Great Beer. Yeah. Awesome book. And man, they get into some crazy stuff. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to like drop jalapenos in your beer or do other weird stuff, these guys have tried just about everything. I think that sounds amazing. I think we might have to do that after we've done this and it... Turned out not bad. Yeah, so in the spirit of experimental brewing, we, popcorn. we did a little bit of an experiment uh, oh, good between segue. the two of us mm -hmm. with this uh, Imperial Vanilla Bourbon Porter. Porter. And, Total disorder um, porter. First, Sam's going to go ahead and let you know what. Oh, it is a stout. But it also says porter. It also says porter. It says stout in one place and porter. You know, it would be great if someone knew the difference between porter and stout. And I want to say, hey, so I've been learning about beers. I bought a bunch of beer books. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm going to learn something about beer. You know what I've found out? Nobody can clearly explain the difference between a stout and a porter. I have heard things about malts. I've heard things about roasted barley. I've heard things about um, uh, the, the level of alcohol. I've heard, heard things about in the early 1800s when certain things were outlawed and this other thing happened. At the end of the day, there's so many differing theories. All I know is that, that, that 
uh, all uh, all stouts are porters, but not all porters are stouts, and we're just going to go with that. So this is obviously one that's both a stout and a porter. Oh, great! Well, this one in particular Ooh, is but it's uh, imperial. Is an imperial like is the there, margarine? Is there a, is there a difference? Can we not believe it's not porter? <laughs> we can't can't believe it's not porter. <laughs> um, not you know this is uh, goes back to the Baltics and Imperials, and really the Imperial was the one that uh, was not fit for royalty, I should say. But it had more roasted barley uh, or black malt in it and was often higher or the highest in alcohol of the porters. So ah. I'm pretty sure this is, after these few glasses, I'm pretty sure this one's got pretty good alcohol level. I'm guessing it's more than four. Yeah, well, as brewed, it's at 7.8 with an <laughs> IBU of 41. Is that before we added bourbon? That's before you added bourbon. And uh, we'll talk about how much you added to yours and what are the different things you did. You, you brewed five liters and you brought in how many bottles? Just the one. That's not true. Damn it. You've peaked. I may have brought five bottles of, of, of porter in. Uh, so Jeremy tells me, he's like, hey, you know, this, this red versus red head to head was such a success. And I mean, they were so even right up to the finish line, but I barely came in last that I said, hey... I need a little bit of an advantage this time. So instead of just, you did what? You did five liters all together, right? Five liters all together. And, and one yep. keg. One keg. One keg, which you have we'll talk about how you're serving it because it's a brilliant way. Um, I thought a little edge might be to um, do five separate batchings of it. So I took my five liters and I do what I always do. I racked it into five um, one liter bottles and then I used a different vanilla or and or a different bourbon in every one so that somehow I've got five times as many chances to have a great beer. Wow. Well, because I'm desperate to win. <laughs> <laughs> Please give me this or I quit. I quit everything. Adam, you in interest for a used Pico Brew? Or to become the next Pico dude. <laughs> oh, you, could, you, you too could be a Pico dude. Everybody's a Pico dude. Mm -hmm. So so about or this dudette. beer. Or brew We're, we're non-denominational. Yep. <clears throat> or, uh, yep. Totally. So this is... Um, Whatever the gentle version of that is. Uh, this is a classic English porter hop profile meeting a rich base malt with flavors of madagascar vanilla bean if that's what you put in your beer i actually did that in three of them yes oh i just got the amazon vanilla bean that my wife ordered so whatever that amazon. is amazon sells all four major types of vanilla bean just so you know <laughs> well i didn't pay attention to which one i put in there so um it has flavors of dark chocolate and toffee Layered un, under Kentucky bourbon or whatever type of bur bourbon you put in there. Yep. And uh, the bourbon and vanilla extract are not included in the base recipe, nor are they factored into the ABVs, IBUs, SRMs, or any of the other things that brewers care All those about. other words. So, yeah, let's be clear. When you buy this from the Pico store, you're just getting a porter. Yeah. And it's a really good porter, by the way. We both tried it before we, we, we bottled. Yeah. Or perhaps a stout, depending on which part of the label you read. Yes, but it's it's really good, but that's all it is until you add something to it. So don't expect to brew this up and have this awesome vanilla bourbon porter. No, but do expect to have an awesome porter because I tried it while I was racking it yeah. into the, the keg that I've got it into now. Or and stout. And either one, it was amazing. Yep. Or a pout. Can we call it pout? Or a storter? No, I don't like yours. Yeah, I don't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, since we've already been pouring and you've got this awesome keg set up for us, uh, do you want to tell us what you did with yours? So yes. let's start with, and I have to unfortunately admit this, I did not brew this beer. This is during the Pico Down, the dark, dark days of Pico Down. Uh, I was also going through a horrible sickness. I was sitting here telling Adam, boy, I cannot remember brewing this beer. And I was, he's like, what? I'm like, I was so sick. I, I went back and I went on my Pico Brew to look at my brew house yeah. to figure out. And I'm like, even Pico Brew doesn't remember me brewing this beer. <laughs> my Pico was really down. <laughs> and then Jeremy reminded me, what happened, Jeremy? Uh, you didn't brew the beer. I did you not brought brew me, this beer. No, you brought me a step filter preloaded <laughs> and said, my Pico blew up. I need you to brew this beer so it doesn't go to waste. And I said, I got your back. I popped it in. We brewed it. You picked it back up and you were completely responsible for the fermentation, mm -hmm. for the additive ingredients yes. and everything. So you do get to take 100% credit for this. Half and half. I'll take something, but... 
yeah, I actually uh, do super appreciate that. That was uh, that was a tough time in my life, and uh, <laughs> you know I'm doing better now, but it was uh, it was rough. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But how about we talk about the beer? All right, sounds good. Well, so <laughs> my beer in particular, again, as we've determined. Uh, <laughs> it is a vanilla bean of unknown origin, uh, other than Amazon delivery. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, Amazon Fresh. And so I also added for the bourbon, I chose Heritage Bay's brown sugar bourbon. And whoa, zesty. It's good. It's it's a very sweet. You're a man with class. Sort of a, sort of an after dinner type of, mm-hmm. of drink. W- Want to get someone drunk quick? Go ahead and drink this. It's like drinking candy alcohol. Or maple syrup or something. It's maple it's, syrup. It's like drinking yeah. maple syrup that's 40% alcohol. Yeah. So it's it's in my beer along with that uh, vanilla bean. And then the other thing I'm doing a little bit differently is I spent a little bit of money and bought an inner tap faucet with the stout spout. And, um, and so we're drinking this on nitro. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that mean? Well, that means that I'm serving it on a beer gas mix, which is 75% nitrogen and 25% CO2. Oh, I thought you were talking about NOS in our cars. Nope. This is not like a 10 shot of nitro in your cylinders. Although it's kind of like it. It's kind of like, it. like yeah. it. It's been pretty dang good. All right. So we've got a lot of beers to try and yeah, get through. Yeah, I got to see. Looks so like quarter mile time. Let's see how it is. All right. <clears throat> toffee, caramel. I get I get a little bit of coffee up front too. Coffee. I was going to say coffee too, some dark nuts. <laughs> In your mouth. How's that mouth feel? Is it kind of silky? That's the nitro. Jeremy, did you say that you got cuddled with the coffee? <laughs> cuddled? <laughs> cuddled? That's what I heard. Um, no. Cuddled? Does, does, like, pretty the big spoon? <laughs> <laughs> That's a... So first, when you pour it... Well, so I thought this was just because of the nitrogen. And, and it does increase mm-hmm. the effect, but you definitely, you get that nice cascading effect with all the bubbles. Upside down bubbles. Yep. And it's just shooting down into the beer. It looks, it looks really cool. It looks epically awesome. And it um, looks great on the beer glass. We should be taking great pictures of this, but we both. We will at some point tonight. That's a good promise. Yep. Okay. So, so I, I think I agree with all of those flavors that you identified okay. on your taste. Um, Put out molasses. Get your molasses out of that. Mm. That is a very good correlation. Yeah. There's a, there's a strong molasses flavor. Um, there's a bit of alcohol flavor in there, kind of in the in the aftertaste. It might be the bourbon. I would I would assume. But it's, what I like is it's not overpowering. So not at all. It's so balanced. There's there's it's bitter, but it's not too bitter because there's enough sweetness to offset that. Yeah. And then you've got that alcohol that ends up sort of cutting through all of it. And I just I just want to keep drinking it. <laughs> so I'm gonna be honest. This is what scares me the most, is adding bourbon to beer. You can easily put too much in, and it just throws the whole flavor off, makes the entire thing just ick. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have not yet tried mine with bourbon in it. Mm. So, excuse me. Um, I'm extremely concerned about that. <laughs> that was a phone. Thank you. Thank you. In case anyone thinks <laughs> another part of me vibrates. Um, so... That would be pretty awesome. So it was uh, a, a, what was I talking about? (laughs) Tiny bubbles? Tiny bubbles. Yeah. In the beer. So I'm lost. Yeah. So it's, 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 what's the SRM on this? What's the chart go up to? 37. I don't. This is probably a 36. This is about as dark as a beer gets. This is, yeah, it's, it's, it's black. Ish. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty dark. I'm pretty sure that's taken. <laughs> so it is. it is it, but it's a delicious beer. It's got a wonderful. So when I first tasted it, 
to me, it had almost like a chocolate milk added in. Mm -hmm. Not overpowering, but just enough of that same feel um, and that same kind of finish that you get. And I think that is, it's the sugar, yeah. the alcohol, and the little bitterness from that. One thing I forgot to mention that I think is important to note, this this one, because because of the recipe or or whatever, I had a very vigorous fermentation on it. It was... it. It it ended up clogging the air lock on my keg and then Ooh. blowing the keg seal off. Really? Going all over the carpet. My wife was super thrilled. Yeah. Well. Um, luckily, I saved plenty of it to drink. And uh, then, you know, it, it turned out really well. I mean, just be warned, it's going to take a while for all of the yeast to ferment through the sugars in this beer. And I think my fermentation ended up... Right around 11 days. Mm -hmm. So then I naturally conditioned it on the keg. You did. I did. This is not. Keg. Not force carbonated. No wonder. I, I think it's really good. No, that's why you think it's really good? No, I, you know, I'm a fan of, 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 of unforced carbonation. <laughs> I don't. Um, Willing carbonation? You had you nailed the carbonation on your red your red. Yeah. Mm hmm Out of all the things <laughs> of all the things you boy, nailed that. <laughs> you don't want to put poison in your mouth. You want that perfect mouth feel. <laughs> Those tiny bubbles. Um <laughs> right. we have to finish this if we're gonna get to another bottle. All right. Bottoms up. Adam? Oh, he's ready. Someone else hasn't been talking. Mmm. Mmm. So go All ahead right. and pour yourself some. Um, we're gonna, what we're going to start with? Oh, we got it. We got a beer wench. I forgot. Right. What do we? What are we going to start? Oh, yeah. Serve yourself first. That's great. We're not. We're not doing a podcast or anything. <laughs> so uh, we're starting with. Right. Uh, I wanted to. You know, a little bit of scientific theory before you get into all these others. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Oh, you'll go for it. So I'm setting it down. Before we get into the ones with all the bourbon in them, I said, let me just take the straight porter because I tried it and it was super good. I tried it as I was preparing to bottle it and I'm like, this is really good. Um, I said, I'm just going to do straight porter with vanilla. That's what we're starting with is the okay. straight porter with vanilla in it. And it's got a Madagascar, which is also a bourbon vanilla bean, even though it has nothing to do with bourbon. So... Uh, that is the Madagascar vanilla bean and straight Denny Con's uh, porter. And you probably poured us way too much because we need four more of these. And you emptied the bottle. <laughs> we cannot, it's only a one liter we bottle. We cannot drink 10 liters of beer in one sitting. <laughs> I mean, we can try. All right. Oh, you yeah, got you got a bean. That's called a floater. <laughs> yep. That's You got a little bit of the... Mm. Now that is a, a much... Much different beer. That is a much different beer, but it is super good. By the it's way, it's not crap. No, it's super good. This is this is a beer that I am proud of, and and I'm going to be honest, folks. Um, listen up. I came in a little nervous today. I was kind of crabby. Jeremy and uh, Adam were giving me a little bit of a or right here on the soft place. Um, <laughs> we're giving me a little bit of a, a a heat because I was I was it's not in a good mood, and that's because you know I'm. I kind of uh, pooped the bed with my ORB Red, and I didn't feel good about it. I really didn't feel good about it. I mean, it was. It was like when you wake up, and it's like running down both legs, and you, okay, you guys are looking at me funny. Um, so I'm, I'm not about that. It's just you keep rhyming today. You're like Andre the Giant and the Princess Bride. It's like, stop that rhyming. Now I mean it. Anybody want to beat it? Um so I was really nervous, and just uh, just for kicks, we thought, hey, we better pop it and try it and make sure we're not about to like destroy our podcast with an absolutely terrible beer. So uh, we popped it open, we tried it, and it wasn't terrible. No. And in fact, it's, it's not excellent. only not terrible, this control group here is freaking good. I really like it. It's It's got... So you were concerned, you've been telling me all week, you were concerned that you I added... over vanilla. You over yeah. vanilla it. But here's what it tastes like to me. It tastes like a beer that... Um, Woohoo, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Nailed but, it. But it's kind of like what you would expect if A&W made a root beer float that was also a porter slash stout. <laughs> because it's kind, of, it's kind of got enough vanilla that you get that that flavor aspect mm -hmm. to it. It's like a 
it's like a root beer float in a beer. It's it's really good. We're gonna have to find some more things to say about it um, because Adam poured a lot of this beer. We're gonna do short pours on the next four. Yep, but I'm drinking all of this. So I also uh, carbonated in the bottles. So what I did is I split the porter five ways into five bottles. I put, <clears throat> this is way too much folks. I did not read the instructions first. I put a half of a vanilla bean in each one liter bottle. You're supposed to use less than half of vanilla bean for your entire five liters. I did a half of vanilla bean in my entire yeah. five five liters. And and luckily, because we're drinking it pretty quick, I think it worked out perfectly because it pulled all the flavor out, mm -hmm. but it's only been two weeks since I bottled this, so it didn't yeah. have time to really soak it all up. Carbonation is good. Carbonation turned out great, I think. And, and you're even getting some of that cascading effect, mm -hmm. which is... Kind of weird at first. I'm like, what did I do? I didn't nitro this. Um, I will say, because I see online all the time people saying, hey, I'm bottling. How much sugar should I add for bottle conditioning? And I'm I'm not trying to make fun of people, but it comes with a pre-measured sugar packet. Yeah. If you put it in five bottles, just divide your sugar packet in five groups <laughs> and use that. And I'm, you don't have to over-measure, folks. Wait, you are these five equal groups? These are five. <laughs> okay. five. Why would you do that? I have eyeballed, and I've done this many times. It's always turned out good. Just eyeball five, five pours, and, and, and it's not that hard. Don't concern yourself overly much with it. If you're using the right kind of bottles, you're not going to blow the bottle. You might get a little bit of a strong pop when you open it, but don't fill it all the way up. Leave a couple inches, uh, at least two, maybe three from the top when you fill it up, and there'll be enough room for that air in there. Just make sure... It's cold yeah. before you open it. Because if it's warm, you might get an explosive effect and half your beer will shoot into the ceiling. Good points. Alternatively, you could get just the little pre-measured bottling tablets. and But you have to like do two and a half or something because they're not designed. They're designed for a standard beer bottle, which is... Well, you you can get both. You can get oh, ones can. that are for bigger for bigger bottles. Really? Yeah. So they make ones for liter bottles. Uh, you can you can buy them at Micro Homebrew. Oh, perfect! Micro Homebrew, uh, nice plug. Yeah. They're a local uh, Northwest uh, Brewing store. They are. Not only are they local, but they're uber local. They're like a mile. <laughs> They'll from drive here. you home. Yeah. No. no, no. <laughs> Good. Would Good that idea. be great? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna need it after after these. All right. Um, so Let's keep our, talking. I'm going to finish these and get another beer here because yeah, our, our beer winch took our, off. Our beer winch, uh, yeah, he's a mysteriously gone to keep my one of my daughters he, he out of the room and, and making noise. Well, mm -hmm. he heard we were going to make him do the Goza Challenge coming oh, up later. Oh, my goodness. Goza Challenge. If you have not done the Goza Challenge, this is what's really freaking me out, folks. If you've watched our YouTubes, uh, is our YouTubes? Am it, I just it's really not. old? So, so it's these, our YouTubes. You should see them. They're amazing. Subscribe now. They're not actually on YouTube. What? They're go well. We can put them on YouTube, but they're. But we have going subscribers on, on YouTube. What are they watching? We have one subscriber on YouTube. That is subscribers. Oh, you're right. That's <laughs> that's, that's, that's subscribers. <laughs> we have subscriber on YouTube. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on Instagram, and we'd like okay. to start a hashtag. And this is the Anderson Valley Brewing, <laughs> the the Kimmy and the Yink and the Holy Goza. Mm. Or I'm, I might be saying that wrong, but it's the. We're going to call it hashtag Holy Goza Challenge, and that's G-O-S-E, Holy Goza Challenge. So um, we want you to check that out and get your friends, get yourself, get your wife, try this beer, and have somebody... Not if you don't want to be divorced. Should you hide anybody? Should you hide, your, <laughs> hide your friends, hide your wives, hide your husbands. They're drinking all this Goza up in here. Do um, not make your wife drink this if you love her. Well, or if you or make, husband, or, do not make your husband drink this. If you are listening to this and you have a husband, please don't, because um, he may not love you anymore. Just don't kiss him afterwards. <laughs> oh God! It's so. But we had a buddy that we did this with, and he actually didn't have as bad of a reaction as everybody else in the world. Yes, but he used to drink French beer, and you have to take that into context. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, anyways. Hashtag holy H O L Y G O S E right. challenge. All right. So, and if you don't know how to spell challenge, then I can't. I can't help you. Hold on, folks. Oh, look at that go! All right, so we're gonna try. Dude, that looks <clears throat> awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've been working out. <laughs> um, we're gonna try this. Uh, I've done a couple different versions, and it looks like I grabbed uh, the Woodford. 
to start with. Woodford. What's the Woodford? So the Woodford is Woodford Reserve. So I used Woodford Reserve bourbon on two of these. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them I used the bourbon uh, vanilla bean, uh, okay. Madagascar. <clears throat> the other one I used a Tahitian. So both dip very different vanilla beans. And if I were sober and had brought my notes, Which I would explain the difference. This one is the bourbon vanilla bean. So we're going from straight bourbon vanilla bean uh, with the porter to adding the Woodford Reserve bourbon. This is a softer bourbon than the other one I used. So it won't hopefully hit us as strong. You poured way too much, senor. I did mm. not. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, I'm I'm seeing a here, good. Okay. It's still, you know, it's just this beer. We get you get a little bit of that cascading effect, even in pouring out of the bottle. Yeah, you get a wonderful, yeah, wonderful effect. This is all naturally carbonated. Yeah, naturally carbonated, just about right. One, two fingers. It was worth two fingers that. when you started, but it tightened up. Yeah, nice. So uh, this is which vanilla bean? The Tahitian. This is still the bourbon. Vanilla bean, so the Madagascar vanilla bean, but it's the same thing you just drank, but we've added bourbon to it. Okay, Woodford got Reserve it. bourbon. Got it. And I have to say, that's got some taste. Oh, dude. <laughs> that's good, man. Mm. That's good. Why do we do this on a day when we have to go back to work tomorrow? I'm, I'm, I, you know, I have a, I have to be at work at 6 a.m. tomorrow and I am regrets already. <laughs> so, uh, I'm thinking about my 3.30, 4 a.m. wake up call and, uh, wow. uh, this is so good. So this is really good. Um, how much did you add as far as bourbon to your five liters? Um, I'm going to say between two and a half and three ounces and probably closer to three. I added about a half ounce to each, pardon me, <laughs> I added about a half ounce to each one of my one liter bottles. And I have to say, before I bottled, I threw out, I, I did five samplers because I said, oh, I'm just going to do samplers, right? Mm -hmm. And I added bourbon to each and it was so strong and it scared me. Yeah. Because you can over bourbon so easy when you're doing these flavorings to the bottle. Remember, you're not adding it to add alcohol. You're not even adding it to make it bourbony. You're just trying to slightly shift the flavor character of the beer. Yeah. So it, it gives the impression of being aged in like a bourbon barrel mm -hmm. as opposed to having somebody had said... It tastes like someone poured alcohol in your beer. Yeah. This is, this is not... Um, Oh, what, what's that drink you get when you go to a, a bar and you get like a shot? Boiler makers. Yeah, or, like a boiler. Yeah, this, this is, is not a, what this is intended yeah. to be. No, this is uh, very much, or we got an Irish bar and, uh, you know, we do it. Not the Irish trash can. What am I thinking of? That's the one with the Red Bull in it. No, they they have one that's basically like a boiler maker. Yeah. Car bomb. Can't, car bomb. Irish they car call bomb. It, yeah, they call it something else. Do they call it the You Irish? sure it's not an Irish car bomb? I'm positive. It sounds a lot like a car bomb. It's not. Not that they would ever do that. The they're car great bomb people. has Please the, don't bomb my car. I really like my car. <laughs> now let's let's take on entire countries while we podcast. Now, I'm going to drink more of Irish. this delicious beer. It is good. It is then, four clover good. If I were a leprechaun, I'd love this. Oh, gah, 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 this is good. I just lift a beer. Why, are, why are your leprechauns <laughs> always Popeye? Because <laughs> you Popeye's Irish. You didn't know that. Oi, all of our lives so long. <laughs> we need to pour your next beer. <laughs> Get olive oil that in is, here. All right. She can be our beer witch and put Adam's thong on her. Good <laughs> <laughs> now shit. Now I'm picturing olive oil. In, in the, yeah. In, the, in, a, in, a, in a You just picture <laughs> olive oil in a banana hammock that says beer up one side and wench up the other. It says, well, I'm not going. All right. More beer. <laughs> Ooh. Let's do it. Look at the smoke coming I out know, of that thing. That's so cool. Guys, putting this into one liter bottles is the best. Unless you're an absolute alcoholic and you're going to drink five liters of beer in two days. Yeah, this is the problem. This is why my brother-in-law is here predominantly is to help us drink. Because now Sam's got to open all these bottles. We have of 10 liters beer. of beer we have to drink in one night. I think we're going to have to like hang some of these around our neck and like go find people in the neighborhood to help us finish this off. Because this is too cow. good a beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to put them like udders and <laughs> make people suckle <laughs> off of them in the middle of the street. <laughs> I had not thought of that, but we're getting some nipples and we're doing that. <laughs> uh, you can buy those at Micro Homebrew, by the way. <laughs> mm. Please, pour yourself some of this. 
This All is right. the same thing we just had, but instead of the bourbon vanilla bean, it's a Tahitian vanilla bean. And what I'm curious is, don't God, my goodness, you aren't going to be able to walk up your stairs. I don't have to commute far. No, you don't. I'm armed. I can't walk up your stairs either, but that's more. Oh, I got to. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Me. Sorry. Whee! Is that me? Are you happy to see me? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, my beer just got really excited. So keep in mind, folks, when I condition these in the bottle, go for it. You're, oh, you're in. Um, I actually put. <laughs> urine. There better not be any <laughs> urine in here. Um, I actually put way too much vanilla in. So as we were talking about vanilla, I added half a vanilla bean to each bottle. And so when you're pouring, be prepared for a little thing to stick out. Also known as, as a vanilla bean. And you know what? We have not been describing, or at least we didn't describe the last one. So I thought we did. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here on the beer flavor map. Good. <laughs> good. Do all this stuff we're talking about. Right next about. to umami. <laughs> good. Umami. <laughs> umami. <laughs> umami. <laughs> Watch out, we're peaking. <laughs> I'm peaking. <laughs> Wait, this is good beer. All right, we're only about five liters in. We got work to do. Come I on. I know. Mm. So, curious. Holy shit, there's a difference. There is a difference. Man, I got to beep the... that out again. Whoa. <laughs> what? What is... So this is... Which one? The Tahitian? Tahitian vanilla bean. This has a... um. It's more vanilla e, like yeah, that uh, sweetness that you yeah, get. Yeah, I almost want to say there's a little bit of a coconut aftertaste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. that a thing? Is that what? Oh, that's a thing. You ever been to Hawaii? Yeah, but I didn't know like permeated their vanilla beans. <laughs> it could, like, I, I know there's coconuts in Hawaii. God, this is. Are we? This is like a coconut porter. It's it's really yummy. I mean, we gotta brew a lot more of this. <laughs> <laughs> so this is again with the the Woodford Reserve, and I went the wrong way because I meant to do my other bourbon first, but this one was closer to me when I reached for it. Yeah. Um. But uh, this is Woodford Reserve bourbon, and this is a Tahitian vanilla bean, and I got the freshest grade A vanilla beans off Amazon. Off of Amazon. But they sell all of them: Mexican, Tahitian, Madagascar bourbon. Um, is really good. This one is my favorite so far. Mm -hmm. But is it like wine tasting? No, I don't think so. Okay. And no. in case you haven't listened, we enjoy taking the families to go wine tasting. But one thing we've discovered is that every place you go to, the first place you go to, one or two wines are good and the rest are crap. And the second place, like three or four of them are good and the others are not so good. By the fourth or fifth place, the everything is good. This is the best wine I've ever had in my life. You join wine club. You're and signing then up. You regret send it later. me everything you guys make. I'm gonna tell all my friends. So the good wine buses, the ones that are really good at what they do, they take you to a couple other places. Don't pay much first, and the place that pays them the most, they'll bring you to last. Yeah, because you're gonna think they have the best wine you've ever had in your life. Is this that beer? No, I don't think so. Because A, we're dealing with a lot less mm -hmm. alcohol by volume. And two. And B, <clears throat> and B, I, I can still taste drastic differences yes. glass to glass. Just in the vanilla. Just in the vanilla. And this is... I like the Tahitian vanilla bean better than the bourbon, the Madagascar vanilla bean. This is my favorite so far. Like... This is a this is a porter slash stout that I could take and drink on the beach. Yeah. Oh, it would taste perfect on the beach. Yeah. I'm going to Hawaii. I wonder if they'll let me bring my beer with me. Denny, you have created a, a base beer that is amazing to experiment with with just two of two agree ingredients. What is this one? This is uh going back to the bourbon vanilla. Um so the Madagascar vanilla bean. But it's got... Uh, Matahuha? Matahuha. Madagascar. No, um, if you've... Uh, we are Northwesties. And we have a little town called Woodenville, a little north of Redmond. Oh, And yeah. this is made with something uh, from a company called Woodenville Whiskey. They make a bourbon. Woodenville Whiskey makes a bourbon. Now, I don't like their bourbon. It's not my kind of bourbon. I'm an Irish whiskey kind of guy, and I... The best thing Woodenville whiskey makes is vodka. It is. My vodka is actually really good. Their yeah. whiskey is okay. It's it's good, but it's... it's, it's I, I'm not a big fan. Yeah. Not my taste. 
I love a good red breast. I love a good Jameson. I bet I'm not as much into the Woodville whiskey. So is that where you get the Irish pie, Popeye from? It's a hack, 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 hack. So, and um, so what we've got here. And by the way, we're not describing look or feel because they all look and feel the same. You would not be able to determine which was which by look or feel. But we're going to try taste. This is going to be, and this is why I was concerned. Woodenville whiskey. And when I tried them both, because I drank them both straight first to make sure I understood the flavor maps. Mm-hmm. Woodenville whiskey has much more of a bite to it. My fear was in a porter, is it going to overpower the porter and take it over? All right. So let's try it. Let's let's find uh, out. We're about to experiment. Ooh, I got way more whiskey flavor. Yeah. Almost no vanilla in that. Almost no vanilla, but it depends on your taste buds. I could imagine people <laughs> well i'm wondering too if if we don't detect vanilla because vanilla has been so present in the last yeah. couple that we've tried there's the same amount of vanilla in each one but this has got a whiskey punch you in the freaking nose kind of flavor this is very this is much drier you got regrets i can see it on your eyes no it's not yep. it's, it's not bad this, this is this is still a very good beer you just woke up and your arm is trapped beneath something that you didn't think you went home with that's the look in your eyes. You think no. you had a good time last night, but you woke up, looked over, and went, what did I do? This is this is not the case. Are you going to gnaw your arm off? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I finally, finally, nine episodes in, I finally got you. <laughs> Blam. Oh, dude, that was... And Adam missed it. Adam oh. missed it. Um, okay, let's see. One arm bandit here. Let's try it. Now you're on your own. Mm-hmm. This mm. is a. Uh, oh, this tastes like a beer that three drinks in, you won't be able to walk straight. Finish up. Finish up. Come on, cowboy. That's got a much more prominent alcohol. Bite. That's my problem with Woodenville whiskey. Oh. Is is Woodenville whiskey has a sharp hit to? Oh, did you try some? Baby. Oh, you already poured some? Yeah. Oh, that, man. That's like the Jägermeister of beers. Like it, Jägermeister. You taste that's it. That's like the cock punch of beers. It, yeah, exactly. Like, you taste <laughs> you it. You felt go, that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up with this because I'm going to, like, I'm about to have a good time tonight. Like, I'm. there's a lot of shit that's about to go down. But I don't think I'm going to enjoy it all Should the time. Should I pour this one over ice? This, this is, this one's. You might want lube for this one. This one's, um. This is not good. No, it's not. No, it's not good. It's it's not bad. This is you drink this to this get is, drunk. This is this is bourbon coffee. Have you ever read Fifty Shades of Grey? No, but my wife has, and I've seen most. Okay, of look the at movies. look at him try and duck it. Okay, so when you get to chapter twelve, this <laughs> is of which book? <laughs> um, is this the Red Room? This this is the red room. This is a very specific taste. There are masochists who would probably just like the Gosa, mm. just like the Gosa. There are masochists that probably would think this tasted delectable. <laughs> you know what scares me the most is that we're gonna have Adam do the Gosa challenge. I'm pretty sure he just gonna, burnt his fucking taste buds off. Gonna, I'm pretty sure he's gonna throw up on the Should popcorn. I give you, <laughs> you don't want to drink the rest. It would very small pour, very small you pour. You don't have to. If if only he would finish that mm. water in that glass, then we could pour. That's mine. This is like this is like gasoline almost. So I put no. the exact same. Get this, the exact same amount of bourbon. And frankly, I wasn't going to use the Woodenville whiskey, but I'm a local boy, and I wanted to be a local boy. Done yeah. good. And when I tried it, <clears throat> my nose is running now. Yeah. This is like kicking me in the face. So, so do their vodka next time. I, I've tried it. It's delicious. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, like, yeah, I'm with you. It's, <laughs> Folks, don't do Woodenville whiskey in your, in, your, in your beer. Just don't do it. This Woodford, is such a beautiful porter <laughs> slash stout. Woodford Reserve is a balanced, oh my soft God. bourbon. That was amazing. Those beers that you did, the everything but this oh, one. Remember when it was good? I, I wanted to do this first. Can you imagine how good it would have tasted if we'd done this first? Oh, we would have lowered so many expectations. Oh my gosh. Uh, on our mm. part. Oh, you know, we're car uh, guys. We're big car guys. And this is the kind of beer that um may have looked good, but you know, and by the way, this isn't a BRZ. And, and for no. those folks, for those folks who maybe uh, uh all thousands and thousands of our listeners who wrote in angrily, understand 
<laughs> Nobody wrote it. <laughs> no, 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 understand. We had piles of mail. We are still, Adam is still sorting through the mail. Um, <laughs> there he is, like paper. We have driven Subaru BRZs, so don't give us. We have raced and drifted Subaru BRZs. We have rally raced we, Subaru we BRZs. We do not need your comments. Your car is great in certain circumstances. And <laughs> when just, you're driving on the freeway, don't come near us. It sucks. Just hang back. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm going to say something. I just took a big, another mouthful with the full expectation that it was going to punch me in the junk. <laughs> But there are some nuances to this beer. You still can pick up a little bit of the the vanilla. The 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 alcohol is the just alcohol is overpowering. It, it is. And the thing is, it it's not really the is. alcohol. Was, I just looked, and I, I thought maybe there was a different alcohol percentage from the different It's flavors. actually lower. No, they're exactly oh, they're 45%. Same. 45, okay. Well, are they really? Yeah. They're all at 45%. It, well, uh, both, between yeah. this and the Woodford Reserve. Yeah. yeah. It tastes like one was a 25% and one was a 50. It This tastes like the uh, the cask. It's uh, like, eth- like, this is the stuff that you pour, you get rid of. It's like putting moonshine in your in your beautiful beer. Mm. This is only, I bet you pirates drank this. <laughs> pirates. Pirates. Yeah. This is a very pirate. Oh, I would love to pillage and the other thing pirates do. <laughs> blunder. Thank you, Adam, for the blunder save. <laughs> I'm going to blunder that. Never mind. Oh, I poured way too much of that here. No, sir. you did not. I did that. And again, it looks like foam. It has a great uh, bottom falling out of it. it this is uh, this is a dancer from In Living Color. Uh, just the bottom falling out of it, and uh, it's turning into a full blown beer in seconds. And it's gorgeous. This beer is gorgeous. Look Denny, that. look at the way that just cascades. So this is this is an interesting thing. We talked we got to meet Annie Johnson with Pico Brew and AJ. she was she was telling us, you know, the the Tweeties is a base. Uh-huh. Take it as a base and then go experiment with yep. it. What what Denny's given us here is a beautiful beer to start with and it's a it's a base to like go and, you know, work with and Adam, you don't have far to go. You can drink tool. more of that. Nice bitch pour there, buddy. I know. I'm just trying to get my cascade. <laughs> Enjoy um, your one inches of beer, but <laughs> <laughs> dry beer. This is, um, we talked shit a little bit on the Woodenville whiskey one, but I think if I was drinking that out, like not having all of the other ones, or if it was kind of an after dinner and I was expecting a bourbon, like a really heavy bourbon yeah. porter, you wanted that bourbon, I would have been happy flavor. with that, yeah. It, by the way, it was no ORB, and no, I'm sorry, ORB, for ruining your beer forever, but that was like licking taint. It wasn't good. Yes. It, it, not just taint, but like no, all the way to the rear. Like post-workout, mm. your hot yoga. Mm. Okay, something just happened in my mouth. Um, was it a beer gasm? Would you like to try this last one, which is, again, Woodenville Whiskey with Tahitian Vanilla. Now that... That is something that's kind of cool. <laughs> that is something different. And so, now for something completely different. So so the Tahitian vanilla that added like a lot more sweetness and sort of a almost a like suntan lotion flavor to to the other beer with the Woodford with the Woodenville whiskey has created the a sweet. really nice balance. It, you know, it's strong flavors both sides, but yes. the sweet has created a hell of a balance. Yeah, they're they're in balance. Like one isn't overpowering the other and completely overtaking I'm the whole you. flavor profile yep. that you're getting. And this is really nice. It's better. It's better. I think if you were to uh, go back. <laughs> there's, there's still, I'm still getting, I can't tell if it's from the previous beer or if it's actually from this one, but I feel like if I burp <laughs> with it's a, all stomach, acid. yeah, I no. feel like if I burp with a lighter in front of my mouth, it's going to explode in fire. Okay. So I am feeling the same way. This flavor profile is better, but my chest burns. Yes. Like it just sucked back three shots of whatever rye whiskey was on cask. Yep. It's cask strength right now. This is, um. But again, it's not it's not bad. Or I, I think Denny has done a great job of building a porter that can take just about anything. Especially is, vanilla and bourbon. Yes. It's it's this is 
This is the Sasha Gray of Porters. <laughs> so should we? Not the Christian Gray. <laughs> it may be that too. So should this we, thing can take almost anything and come out looking pretty good. Should we for, for one one more of these? Should we actually try and describe what we're tasting? Sure, let's per the per the beer flavor map. If I could read the map, I'd do that. This is the offic like officially the longest podcast we have we are going to post. My apologies, and I have not even added the intro and the outro. Mm, that's going to be good times. Yep. So, how about after feel? Should we start at the butt? How much how much woody are you getting? <laughs> <laughs> Why have we had so much beer? Well, because that was the whole point of starting this podcast. That is true. Drinking all this beer. But mm. let's see. There is none of those woody flavors present. I feel like we should put a challenge out to the drunk history people. And it was define the challenge. Um, because they think that they're good at doing history while drinking. And I think we do a good job of acting sober during podcasts. Oh, I thought you were going to say, we just do a good job of drinking. <laughs> we do that, too. We do that, too. Um, what are you getting? Uh, start with aroma. Start with aroma at the top. What aromas are you getting out of that beer, Mr. Hidalgo? Can uh, can I just uh, say it smells like a porter? Like, I'm, I'm trying. I just took a big drink, and it kind of blasted. Well, aroma. What kind of aroma are you getting with that, Jeremy? It's hard to get an aroma off of this. I'm all of my shit. No, is it's like, not. This has got a definite Adam. What kind of aroma are you getting for that Adam beer? It's stout. It's stout. <laughs> it's, and it's like a porter, porter slash stout. Okay. Skip uh, aroma. How's that mouth feel? Alcoholy. Mouth oh, feels good. It's just yeah, it's burning. Can we address <laughs> taste then? <laughs> it tastes like burning. <laughs> it hurts my taste buds. Quick nibbles, chew through my ball sack. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were doing Simpsons quotes. No, it does. It has it has an eat like a it has a really heavy alcohol. But taste. does it have a burnt? Do I get a burnt something? Yeah. Like a burnt cashews. I'm I was gonna say waffles. Burnt waffle. Oh my god. Microwaved egos. Yeah, like with the vanilla ones that have the little But then you've poured syrup on it, but then since you're not enjoying it as much. Well, I'm watching your face. I, and it just went from happy to sad. It's weird because I enjoy it when I drink it. <laughs> and then for a few seconds afterwards, and then I like breathe out and there's all this alcohol flavor. <laughs> I'm having a, such a hard time with the, the, the level of alcohol. I'm pretty sure you, how many did, how many shots of alcohol did you put in here? <laughs> it's, oh, I feel like I could breathe fire right now. <laughs> Sam's lost it. <laughs> I'm on my own again. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so what do we... Couldn't have taken pictures an hour ago. Nope. <laughs> so what what are you rating the uh what are you rating the Denny Con? The uh Imperial okay, Vanilla let me just start Border with the or perhaps Stout. I'm calling it Total Disorder Porter, and I, I have to say that the Porter itself, I uh, I struggle being perfect. The fives are hard. I've never given a five. I've never given a four and a half mm -hmm. until now. I am giving this porter a four and a half. What you do with that four and a half is completely up to the brewer. You can do whatever you want with it. But this porter, and again, we tried it before we added all this crud to it, was a great porter. And we've had two or three brews tonight that are in some of my favorites already. Yeah, I, Dragon's Tooth Stout was That's one a great of my one. favorite That's a great one too. Until tonight, I would take I, I would brew this one over that one every day of the week. Denning has done a great job, and you, you know you call him the base porter. I think the porter itself is great. I think the porter with just vanilla, yes, is delicious. It, it, it was I, that one was like a root beer float. Porter, which was awesome. It was a dangerous. That was a that was a high alcohol candy that will get you in trouble quick. So keep in mind with the bourbon we've added, these have got to be eight percent plus beers, and um, they are oh fantastically delicious. I think uh, I think Jeremy's looking to finish. We're gonna go back to the with start. his own in his mouth to see what it tastes like. I, I'm gonna see how a little bit of time. And burning to my taste buds uh, either improves or I improves. I think it's going to be magic because uh, 
I think uh, you're going to realize what a good beer you made. Yeah. So, well, let's start with what you made. So we had, in my opinion, we had a range from four to five star beers tonight. No. In my opinion. But I love dark beer. We had a range beer. from two and a half to five stars. <clears throat> I don't think so. That, I think even even the one that was so hard on on my taste buds was the one that made you cry was more a product of the fact that we had some some five star beers before. And, you are and Anna. I love yes. I <laughs> I love dark beer. You signed and the contract. So tonight, <laughs> you and the Fifty Shades of Grey references. Did you read the books? No, yeah, but you've seen the movies. <laughs> I may have read. I mean. She's really into them. I had to know what I'm in for. Yeah, yeah. You, you totally read the book. Was it book on tape? No. No, that's me. It's horrible. <clears throat> no, here's what's the best part. You can read this entire book in about an hour and a half if you're a guy because you just skip all the stuff with Jose. <laughs> oh, deals, meal. And you just <laughs> cut straight to all the different pieces. And hour and a half, two hours tops, you can get this book down. And now you know. And, and you know, there's nothing better than being informed. But now you're back to so 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 go back. This is your beer. What do you think? So my beer is a five star. No, it's not to me. To me, it's a five star. But it's not just because it's. So you've never had a better beer in your life. No, I have, but only barely. <laughs> and and I think the other better beer that I had tonight was your Woodford Reserve ah, with the Tahitian. Tahitian. Oh. That was so good. So that, that like, gets a five and a half. If I could rate a five and a half, stops at five. It, it gets also a five. I will be. You're very generous with these fives. No, no, no. I'm not. Uh-huh. Nothing else gets a five. Thanks, tonight. Coach. Everyone gets a participation <laughs> medal. You're yeah tonight. <laughs> not not tonight. So you're you're thanks um, for playing, everybody. Your Woodenville whiskey Mm-mm. and bourbon vanilla bean gets, gets two and a half. It gets a four. Two and a half. Oh, come on. Keep Mr. in mind. Doggo. No, no. Keep in mind. I I really enjoy dark beers. And th- everything I had tonight, I really liked. Except for that one part where I, I thought I was going to burp fire. But other than that, I really like pretty much everything. And uh, <clears throat> and then your, your Woodenville whiskey and the Tahitian vanilla bean... That was it's that was better. That was pretty good. Because they offset two strong that flavors was a, that offset each that other. That was a four and a half. What? That was a four and a half. That was a three and a half for me. That was a three and a half. Three for and me. a half for me. So so how do we direct people like what they should do to this beer? We should we just say them. should we just say that the Denny Khan Imperial Vanilla Bourbon Porter Stout, depending on which side of the label you look at, yes. is a the pout. It's right. great. It's great. Do the it's pout. It's great. Go buy, buy a, a bunch of these. Buy a and you know what? Buy it, brew it. Do what I did. Break it up into multiple groupings. Do five one liter bottles. Add different flavorings, different vanillas, different bourbons. Do to taste. And one or two packs in, you're probably going to stumble against something that you're like, this is the best I've ever had of this type of beer. That is the challenge for you is go out and... Make it your own. But you can't go wrong. It is so good to start with that your biggest risk is over-flavoring the beer. So I have to ask. Yes? Would you rate my beer? I don't know. I have to try more of it. There's there's a kegerator right behind you. It barely barely has any beer left in it. That's not true. (laughs) It barely has any beer. So we know... It's no ghost. Right. Right. We know that you're. Oh. I think I think my my favorite tonight was your Woodford Reserve. Woodford Reserve with Tahitian vanilla bean. Tah- yeah, Tahitian vanilla bean. That was good. I wish I could use words, but it was pretty good. Did we just spent fifty eight minutes of words? So we but can we're use gonna, words. We're gonna, we're gonna edit this. It's okay, folks. We won't make you. Yes, we will. So I'm on yours again. I'm taking a little sniff. I use the popcorn to cleanse my palate. Mm-hmm. That's what I was doing in right. case you have upset about the popcorn levels I've been n- consuming. I have no upset. How much flavor are you getting off that? It's it's less than yours. My problem is I came straight from that last Woodenville whiskey with Tahitian, and now I feel like I've got brown water in my mouth. 
Give it a second taste. Okay, second taste is really, really, really good. I'm a four and a half across the board. I think this beer, <clears throat> I think we've done two or three variations that are all four and a halves for me. Yeah. I am reserving my five. So folks, when you're listening, when you hear me say five, that's the best beer I've ever had that's been brewed by anyone other than myself, than myself, myself. <laughs> There's a lot of beer. Did I there. make that? What would what would be the best beer for you? Would it be some kind of a uh, wit beer? Well, so here's the trick. German style. I don't know. Uh, as since we've started drinking beers uh, on the podcast, and I've been studying them, learning more about them. I'm you know as we go out, I try I try things I'm not used to. Yeah, and I'm getting a feel for the IPAs. I'm getting a feel for that that bittering piece that that almost I learned so much. This bittering that was started by the British back when they were shipping beer over long distances. Hops were not for flavor. Hops were an antiseptic to allow the beer to travel long distances without it getting extra funk in it. Right. And what happened was what they found is they added all these hops to this beer. And guess where it went? India. The British colonies right. in India. It'd go to India and these hops added these bittering flavors that... Frankly, when you drink them, remind your body of poison. And your, really? bo your body gets this little extra whoo out of, hey, I've just been poisoned. And you know, I don't know what your body sounds like. Maybe it's, hey, I've just been poisoned. I'm a tougher body than Sam's. And you get this <laughs> body. But it's almost like, you know, when you have something super spicy, when you do a bungee jump or skydiving, you get that rush of, hey, I've just survived something that should have killed me. And they actually found that these bittering pieces in these IPAs, these India Pale Ales, have become almost addictive to people because they're so, that flavor hits them in a chemical way in their bodies. Yeah. They're like, I need yep. more of that. And I want something harder and, 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 and more hoppy. Hops were only to keep the beer safe uh, as it traveled long distances. And now we're taking these hops and we're adding these flavors and these aromas. And by the way, not just as bittering agents, the only time hops add bitter is during the brewing process. Adding hops anytime past brewing is simply aroma and flavor without yeah. bitter. Yeah, and exactly. And we're seeing more of that. So for me, I'm waiting for that beer. That beer that's not super high IBU because I don't care. I don't care how high your IBUs are. I don't care how much bittering hops you put in. It's not a contest, folks. It's gross. I don't care. What I'm excited is <laughs> the guy who was so upset about his <laughs> ORB representation. That was, yeah, that was just, I'm yeah. so ashamed. But what I care about is someone that can make a beer that when I smell it, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I in for? And when I taste it and when I swallow it and that mouthfeel and that finish and that aroma and everything together, and I just go, wow. And I don't care if that's dragon fruit or peaches or whatever it might be, all these words that need to be said in separate ways. I don't care. It's going to hit me. I'm going to tell you and you're going to be like, okay, now I get it. So good good segue. So next week we have 10 second car. Oh, wait, not just 10 second car. You know what I'm bringing in your face next week? What? Remember Denny Khan? Yeah. He may have come up with a little porter that you know. Mm -hmm. He's got a good friend named Drew Beecham. What did he come up with? His co-host for his podcast, his co-author on his books. A little citrus saison. What kind of beer is 10 Second Car? It's a saison. Mofo, we are on. So we are on. Why are all of these competitions? We should just make these. It's like, all a competition. Measure it now. All right. All right. Dude, like, so 10 Second Car is going to come in. It's it. It's going to be your flavor profile to a, to a certain degree. It's like 30 IBUs. We're at like it's a fairly light beer. We're we're hitting around seven point one seven. I say around, and then I give you exactly the number: seven point one seven two five percent SRMs. Mm -mm. And we're we're coming in at eight point six ABV. So you whoa, better whoa, 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 bring whoa. your shit, man. So so that sounds like a lot of alcohol in my face. That is. As like you're hosing me down with your yeah. little alcohol flavors that you've got. I'm gonna say whatever Denny Khan is left over from tonight and make you drink that in between your <laughs> your beer, which will probably be amazing, and my beer, which I need to get you drunk for. And <laughs> no, no, no. Then you can, then you you can me buy the... Or lose me forever. <laughs> um, no, so listen up. So I've got this Citrus Saison. What would you say your uh, IBUs were? 30. I'm up at 51. 
Mm. But my alcohol is only six and a half. My alcohol is 8.6. You know what your SRM is? 7.17. Three. <gasps> it's going to be like looking at water, man. Mine's done by Drew Beecham. Who invented 10 second car? Uh, Jeremy Adalbo. <laughs> I went to freestyle. The host with the most pros? Yes. And also the guy think- who puts the beer in beard. The guy, the guy whose name is Spike. <laughs> is this Spike's beer? This is Spike's beer. So Spike is the kind of guy who goes to freestyle and says, I'm going to fucking start with a Saison. And wow. then I'm going to go, this is all the shit that I want to put in it. And wow. I think it's going to be good. And we're going to find out. Down. And you know what else? What else? This beer has been fermenting for fucking ever. That's a long time. So long. So Pico Firm told me it was done... Like six days ago. Folks, you can't trust Pico Firm. Pico Firm's a big liar. I went back and like it's sitting in my kitchen. The the temperature is pretty good. It's been controlled. I look at it, there's still bubbles coming out of my airlock. Yep. I can't I can't wait, shut wait, it wait. down yet. Airlock? Describe. Airlock is when you go and you put like your you put the keg seal on your, your Pico Pro keg mm-hmm. and then you put the uh little round plastic oh you are deal. using the airlock with your pico it is an airlock so you've done the bucket i didn't do the bucket on this one this one's all and i have the pico firm attached to the ball lock keg so i'm pretty sure it's reading ambient temperature again but you know what it said it was done like six days ago yeah pico firm's like that friend that taught you about sex in fifth grade you can't trust a thing he says <laughs> <laughs> kind of you didn't have that friend well, I did, but yeah, he said you. something different. Yeah, I did. Even... He didn't say it was 72 degrees. <laughs> it was It was not me. <laughs> Mom and Dad wouldn't let me hang out with him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they stated facts like he's a bad influence. Mm, um, if you jumped off a bridge, would you? No, this has been going for a while. What so, has? My my 10 second car. All so right. It's going to be a good beer. I'm going to force carbonate. Then we're going to put it on nitro. I might force carbonate mine because I've been talking all this crap. Um, what Mine you, is still fermenting and we're one week out. One week out. Okay. Well, I got so time. In about three days, I think I'm going to pull mine off. If it's done, I'm just going to pull it off. Uh, and then I'm, <laughs> are you using the Pico firm to tell you whether you should pull it off or I, not? I actually am. Pico firm is, is pretty much saying it's done. So add three days. Um, and then I think I'm going to force carbonate in one of these serving kegs and see if I ORB it. I am so sorry, ORB for <laughs> what we've done to your label. We will, we will not send us beer, send us beer and let us try it. And if it's great, we will sing your praises. Not only that, but we'll try it again. We'll, we'll, we'll order brew a new another. one. Yeah, we'll order. And we'll let Jeremy do it this time. Or both of us will do it. And then we'll both go us? red to red, head to head, ORB, mm. all the same shit. That would be crazy. Let's do it. I'm for it. Hey, all Alden, right. hook us up, brother. Alden's a guy. He knows who he is. He knows who he is. All right. All right. So are we about to bring this one to a finish? Because I we need to really drink some should. water. We really should. I'm going to roll myself down this hill. That's Denny Khan. Denny Khan with um, the Imperial <laughs> Vanilla Bourbon Porter slash Stout. Slash Stout. Uh, Pico Dudes out. You've reached the end of another episode of the Pico Dudes podcast. Connect with us at PicoDudes.com, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you enjoyed our show, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts, but mostly iTunes. Also, if you want a code that will help give you some discounts off of the Pico Brew equipment, Z150D equals $150 off of the Z series. Pro, P-R-O, 125D gives you $125 off of the Pico Pro. And C75D gets you $75 off of your purchase of a Pico C. We hope you enjoy listening. Look forward to hearing from you. Pico Dudes out.